Welcome, everybody. Friends with cars. We're racing in Mexico. Round two. F1 hey. talk. Hey, oh, this I'm is round two. That's right. No, this is round three. Um, what are you talking well, on the podcast? the podcast, on the podcast, it's round two. Because remember, we did racing in Mexico. We did an episode of racing in Mexico. Already. Oh, so that's, that's what you meant, right? Yeah. Well, this is actually racing in Mexico. This is, this is true racing, racing in Mexico. Mexico. Not us, of course, but of course, Formula One. Oh. Mm-hmm. So first of all, the the Mexican GP just ended, and I just want to get your race reactions. What do you guys think? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the last couple races have been fairly boring, and. I mean, Hamilton gets out, or I'm sorry, Verstappen gets out ahead, and it's just like game over. Like, there's not even a chance. So, this is what's hard for me about it. You got to talk to the microphone, man. Don't look around at people. <sighs> um, <laughs> but I also, ha- actually, having been there, it's hard to watch it on TV because the energy is so much different. Like, of course, I'm excited and something that I'm interested in, but like, like I said, F, we were there. And you can't see all the same things that you can see on TV based off of like where you're sitting. But man, the energy was like 10 times, makes it 10 times better than actually watching it on TV. Yeah, this track definitely holds a spot in my heart, uh, obviously for the reason that we all win. But I wish we would have been here this year because of the whole Sergio Perez being the first Mexican driver to lead a uh, lap in this race, as well as getting on the podium. Absolutely. Which leads next to right to our next topic, which is Checo in Mexico with a car that could actually win. Um, he's never been in that position before. I mean, you can argue the racing, but why are you laughing? <laughs> All I can think of is Checo's dad the whole time. <laughs> yes, Checo's dad was very excited. I think he got the fastest lap just running around holding the flag. <laughs> but yes, uh, but Checo's, ra- he had a good car with racing point at the, by the end of the season. Um, he could have made a difference. He could have won in 2019 if he had that vehicle. This time around, though, Hondas are known for having really, really good pace in Mexico due to the altitude. That's what they that's what they claim. And they did. They had the speed. And they that was very noticeable. Did. Yeah. Uh, Checo in Mexico. I mean, of course, the crowd. And I think we talked about it during the race. You know, what does it do your psyche to race in your hometown and have everybody? I mean, he did. He got third place, but it seemed like he got podium, like P1. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that's something that they talk about. Is it more like hometown stress or hometown like happening like does it make it easier for you or harder for you which i think for me personally it would make it harder for me because there's much more people to disappoint in real time but i guess checo sees it as being um a, a positive which is great yeah i think well it was in 2019 when he was still racing for uh racing point, racing point. i think he got a dnf and yes. yeah he, i remember he got a dnf uh, there was a lot of high hopes for him i think just from did we race in 2020 in mexico or we skip that I think we skipped it. We skipped it. We yes. skipped it. We skipped it. So going from a DNF in 2019, I think anything would have been better than, a, than the DNF. But oh, this absolutely. happened to just be a third place, which is freaking awesome. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely great. Legend says his dad's still screaming on the track. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised he wasn't at the podium. His dad didn't jump on the podium with him. I know. His son was there, which was very cute. I think it's a really interesting thing to actually win where you live and i mean we watch those videos or in the Ayrton Senna do- documentary they talk about him winning the brazil grand Prix, and he's like hyperventilating and he like passes out in the car afterwards because he's so excited like i can't imagine what that's like to a driver to even podium in their home country it's true very true uh, speaking of podiums we're talking about the lewis and verstappen battle it's mm-hmm. been heated it got heated halfway through the season. We're still heated. Max is 19 points ahead. 19 points. We have four races to go. Boo. <laughs> I was going to say, well, how do you feel about that? I... Boo. The boo is very compelling. James? We've been saying the past two podcasts now, you know, it's just nice to see that something that's different. Obviously, I'm wearing a Mercedes shirt today for this morning, but boo. I'm still a Mercedes fan, but it's nice to be able to see someone other than Lewis Hamilton being lead. But why did it have to be him? Why did it have to be Verstappen? Couldn't have been anybody else. You tend to hate the people that are driving well. <laughs> other than Lewis. And it's no, because they're beating Lewis. I like Daniel Ricciardo. If Daniel Ricciardo could win, I would have been cool with that. Let Lewis Hamilton crash into the wall every single week. I don't care. Whoa, 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 if, if, Daniel's winning, whoa, whoa. if Daniel's winning, I'm just saying, like, it's not just Lewis. I have my drivers that I'd love to see win and he's just not one of them i don't like him 
I, <laughs> go ahead. Lewis definitely has. Lewis is an acquired taste. He is a great driver. There's no denying that. But you can definitely see after the race when everybody gets, I mean, he got second place and he was moping in the car. I know that when you're a champion, you probably expect to be number one every single time, but to get on the radio and be like, oh, I gave it my all guys. Oh, I tried. It's like almost crying. I'm like, come on. Yeah. It's- well, when you're the best, it's hard to be like pushed down to not being the best. Like, I don't know, for example, like Ronda Rousey, completely different sport, but she thought she was the best. So she was unbeatable. The first time she got beat, it was like in her mind, she would never win again. So the effect that it has on the psyche, the fact that you're not winning, that could carry on to your next race and your next race. So now with four races left and Verstappen on a roll, this is the third time he podiums and Lewis has not been able to keep up. Mm-hmm. What do you think is going to happen in the next four races? Is, do you think Lewis has a chance? Do you think this, he's just going to let it slip by point by point? I personally, the Red Bull car has never been one of those cars that's always good. Like that year that Daniel Ricardo was, or the last year Daniel Ricardo was driving for Red Bull, he had what, like half DNFs? Like it's just not a consistent car. So I'm hoping that the car gives out. Like I hope something happens to the car because that's what's expected. Jeez. What or what I expect. <laughs> and then Hamilton takes it. But he's definitely gonna need something positive in his repertoire in order to be able to win the next couple races for sure. So you mentioned there's four races left. Two of them are wild cards because they're, they're two brand new tracks. It's the guitar race as well as the Saudi Arabia race. Oh. So it's going to be a hit and miss with those two because obviously they do their simulations. They already know the layout of the track, but having the data for actual driving on the track is not something that they have. So it's going to be really interesting. I think we were talking during the race. It's going to really come down to the last race. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Someone has to make a very horrible mistake or there has to be a DNF in order to swing either Lewis Hamilton's way or Max Verstappen's way, but as of right now, it's very close. 12 points, 19 points. 19, 19 points. Which also, we, we're we counting out Sergio Perez as if he might not just come in and just take it all. I don't know. I don't know that he's got enough with four races left. That's he, 25 points, yeah. so that's 100 points he can get. He's only at 160 points. He's 65. only at 165 right now. So there's, so no, there's way. no way. He can get in third. He can get third place. Valtteri Bottas has 185 points. But no, we have four races left if Max Verstappen and Hamilton just collided every race. Yeah, but they already have over 300 points yeah. for Max. So he'd only have 265 if he got first place. So there's only 100 points left to get. Valtteri, oh, oh, Valtteri oh, could only get to oh, 285. Oh, oh, oh. And Sergio Perez can only get to 165. 265. 265. So it's definitely going to be either Lewis or Hamilton, uh, Lewis or or Verstappen at this point. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of by how many points and in what race. Yeah, I think it'll definitely go to Abu Dhabi for sure. Uh, Or I hope it does. That would be I think that's one of the things about Formula One that's a little off putting is you could really win four or five races before the end of the season. And having it finish in Abu Dhabi would be really interesting. And it would be a cool thing to see for sure. And I think it's very nice that that we are that close because of that reason, because you get to actually cheer to the end Mm -hmm. and know that your driver still has a chance, whether it's Hamilton or Verstappen. Mm -hmm. Along with that, the Constructor Championship is also very close, only by one point. Mm -hmm. And there's also a very close battle for third, which would be McLaren and Ferrari. Right. Yeah. Which I think did Ferrari come ahead today? Ferrari did come ahead today. What do you mean? In the constructors. Yeah, they got forward in fifth place. Yes. So I think that they're now in third place. They are in third McLaren. place. But that's still up for grabs. So right, it's still right. a great, a great battle. Close. Speaking of battles, let's move on to Nikita. <laughs> and my note says Nikita is a little bitch. Hey, and it is. The reason for that, and, and we've seen that, of course, they call it massive spin because he spins out a lot. I think it's kind of unfair. There's other drivers that do that. It, he just did it consistently for a couple of races and yeah. it just kind of became a thing. But I would say he's been very vocal with the team that they're favoring Schumacher. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And well, um, Schumacher brings more money and this is not a sport where they try to hide how much money, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, has to do with the sport itself. Like money's a big factor. I don't know if Mush- uh, Mick Schumacher brings in more money. His, I don't think so. Massabin's dad's a billionaire. But Mick Schumacher's dad is Michael Schumacher. So the sponsors that Michael Schumacher probably had, what, 10, 20 years ago, probably back Mick Schumacher. 
but I don't know that. Don't quote me on that. Well, they both have seats for next season. They're going to be in, in the same car. They have their same seat. But with Nikita being so vocal and actually, I mean, this last practice, the last qualifying, his comments towards the team were, I mean, they were basically arguing, arguing. And then the post qualifying press conference, when he said, you know, I do what the team tells me, even though there seems to be favoring the other team with that kind of relationship, is it going to last? I mean, it, does, does the money that Nikita brings in matter at the point when you're just demoralizing the team and you're in your support? You support? I mean, he should have been cut as soon as the sexual harassment allegations came out. That's, that, that's a non-issue. So the fact that they kept him in, obviously, that was a financial situation. But it, it's going to cost you more money in the long run because he's always going to try and get ahead of Mick Schumacher. And then it causes crashes with the car. It's not financially responsible. So you have to th- you have to think big picture, not just this race, next race. Like financially, if you're worried about money and he brings in money, but he's always crashing the car, it's like, well, what's the lesser of two evils? Right, right. We'll see what happens next year. Brand new cars, brand new regulations. We'll see if he does better. But if he doesn't do any better, I don't th- see him staying for 2023, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I agree. Well, they did a popularity contest uh, recently, <laughs> and Max Verstappen was the number one the most popular driver. Really? I, wonder, I wonder where Nikita plays. <laughs> at the we should probably check that out. Look it up and see what happened on that one. Um, Max is definitely not my number one. So it's weird where those numbers came from <laughs> because I didn't vote. No, no, but it was, uh, it, it was Max who was the most popular, most popular driver. Boo. So, but I would like to see where Nikita landed on that and stroll because you know, somehow we just, we just love to hate Stroll. I know that that one's tough. It's but I like, like to keep him around because he's he's an easy one to to hate and not feel bad about. Yes, yes, but he's got a similar situation to uh, Nikki Lauda because Nikki Lauda bought his way in. But the only difference is at least um, Stroll, I think, won like the Formula Three Championship or something right. like that. And right. so he's proven he has driving skills. It's just easier to hate him than it is to like him yeah it's well, the accent for sure <laughs> it's the accent is the canadian accent i don't know what it is but it's it's got douchebag written all over it <laughs> so i found that list i wish they would provide in a list format but it's max verstappen then it's lando norris oh. which i could definitely see that yeah, yeah. yeah for sure then it's lewis hamilton who's third then you have george russell who's fourth George Russell is a likable guy. Yeah, he's, he's a not guy. a he's not a terrible. Then it's Daniel Ricardo. He's okay. my number one. It only gives the top five. No, okay. Oh. Well, he's probably twenty first because Robert Kubica a <laughs> race this season. <laughs> <laughs> he raced one. He had one race, I so think therefore he'd have asked him twenty one. Wait, there's only twenty drivers, right? He got twenty one. Yeah, I meant what I said. So speaking of finishing last, my last topic that I have is sandbagging and quality. Now, we've we've talked about this before, and I I noticed it a lot recently, but even this last qualifier, I know teams listen to other teams' radios and they know what's going on. I mean, Mm -hmm. today you saw Hamilton say, my tires are gone, and then Paris, 37 laps in, say, my tires are getting good now. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So finally waking up. In qualifier, you see Mercedes not being able to stay on top of the practice sessions and or the qualifier. But when it's time to show up. But when it's time to show up, they Mm -hmm. always seem to get more time. And even on an interview, Hamilton said, yeah, they have a great car. I don't even know how we got ahead of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, we won't know that they're sandbagging because there's no way. They know they have more pace and they're just kind of holding on to it. Why would they do that? What is the purpose of why not go out and just get your best time right off the bat and show everybody no one's going to match my one point, my 115, as opposed to just wait till the last turn around to do it? I think it's about errors i think you when you're going faster and you're trying to beat these records in these times there's a lot more room for errors so i'd rather make my errors when it counts than when it doesn't count so if i spin out or i get into an accident and i'm but i'm finishing my qualifying at in first place like i'd rather do it there than do it in free practice and then when i go to qualifying i don't get a good time at all because i had to put my car back together so if I'm so if I'm in first place at 117, I might as well just leave it at that until I have to try to go faster if someone beats it. Right, yeah. for sure. Okay. I think that's why in Q th- or Q1, they're not really trying that hard, right? Mm-hmm. You can see that the top three, four, five teams are always kind of in the middle range of the, the, the field. But then it comes down to Q2. You know, they're a little bit better and they're kind of saving off for the last qualifying. Right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ultimately, I think it's just saving 
your time and what you can do till the end because if something happens I'd rather do it there put it all on the line there than do it in like FB2 FB3 and then not have a car to start with or to qualify with yeah I think that's definitely one of the the reasons but I just think it's also head games Mm. like if you look at some of the races that Lewis Hamilton says like the tires are shit you know Mm -hmm. We know that he's just playing games and he's just trying to throw off the other team who's listening into the radio. Mm -hmm. I think that's primarily it. And for us, when Lewis Hamilton says, like, my tires are going bad or I have no grip, we just really don't know if he's telling the truth. I mean, today he was telling the truth because he was getting smoked. Yeah. Um, But there's been some times where he's like, oh, my tires are trash. And then he gets the fastest lap. So you're right. I do think head games probably pays a lot. That's another good topic that we got to talk about the whole bodice thing. Yes. Oh. Yes. Bottas. I am wearing my Bottas hat today. I, I he, he qualified for pole. He no. won. I was very excited. Uh, ever since Mercedes let him go, it's been a roller coaster. I've just kind of been looking forward to his progress. But yeah, well, that'll be a topic that we have to discuss on on the next podcast and see how he does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yes, Bottas is. I think it's going to be a factor next season. Today, I uh, I don't think so. The Alfa Romeo is not doing good this season. I don't see that it's going to do any better next season. Brand new car, brand new regulations. Regulation. But what I what I was talking about was the fact that he was in thirteenth position, and oh, then the team yes. had him come in twice. Yes. The team had him come in twice, twice to get brand new tires. The second time, they held him on for another three or five seconds mm-hmm. just to give him clean air mm-hmm. to steal that that extra point for Max Verstappen, Absolutely. which is the one point that separates the team because it's in the constructors for the constructors championship yeah if they would have got that extra point it would have been even Mercedes leads by one and my poor guy getting split or spun out i mean that's tough that's a that's a yeah tough so no situation. fault of his own yeah uh, we still have to check and see why daniel ricardo got no penalty i think maybe he got hit by yuki uh-huh and that's why he spun up but yuki's out so maybe right. that's why there was no penalty. Success. Right, because right. I guess there was no like underlying advantage for him, so they didn't give him any penalty. But I mean, I feel like, granted, I didn't see I didn't see him get hit. So under my assumption, I would have thought he would have gotten at least a five second penalty. That's tough. I feel kind of bad for Valtteri in that situation because, like you said, it's to no fault of his own. I think there's only one team that where it's very clear who who the champion needs to be, and that's Red Bull. Oh, Sergio yeah. Perez has this assignment. Your job is to get points for the team and to help out mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. Max on his quest to become a champion. I don't think any other driver has that task, even though we can tell which was being pushed to help somebody else. I think Valtteri definitely was not was not on board with mm-hmm. being along for a ride to help Lewis win a championship. Mm-hmm. But I think you're right. I think he's been constantly used to try to benefit Lewis mm-hmm. in any way, shape, or form. And and I guess it took him this long to figure it out, and that's why he's leaving. Yep. Yeah. Well, and then also, I think the phone call with Perez when he got signed to Red Bull probably went a, a little bit like, hey, we know you don't have a seat. We have a seat for you, but here's the job at hand. You signed this job description, and so that's what you're going to do, and you're going to be happy about it. They probably didn't approach Valtteri getting signed that same way. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> but Christian Horner's a freaking snake, a snake. So I can almost say like, why do you say that? He just, I don't know. Something about him is just snake. Like, like even watching drive to survive. Like he just gives me bad vibes. He just seems like that person who has like no emotional connection. Like total wolf is a total like mafioso. But even I think he cares a little bit more than Christian Horner does, which is very weird. But I do think that Christian Horner had no problem calling him and being like, look, you're never going to be our number one driver. You're going to be helping Max in any way that you can. Like, is this something that you're going to be able to deal with? If not, we're not going to give you the seat. I, I can agree with that. I, I think, and I think it's a very honest conversation to have, but I do agree with you. There's something about Christian Horner and both Toto. Listen, I think both of those guys have murdered somebody. <laughs> Although Toto, Toto didn't sure. enjoy it. He just had to because it was business. Yeah. Christian Horner enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. He's like, I have to do it, but I'm going to enjoy it while I'm doing it. You know what? It is. The, and maybe it's because he, what, cheated on his first wife with Ginger Spice. Whoa. Like, I got a problem with that. Bring in the dirty oh, okay. laundry. Oh, that's very snake-like. So if you run your business like your home life, you're a snake. Jeez. Period. We're definitely going to have to hashtag Christian Horner on this. <laughs> yes. And uh, see if he can uh, send us a reply on how he feels about that He's comment. He's going to send us a cease and desist. <laughs> hashtag Spice Girls. <laughs> hashtag I just said they've murdered somebody and you just pushed that button. So. <laughs> 
Yeah, a cease and desist. <laughs> We're going to get our whole podcast hacked and taken down because I said that and you said that. So about the assignment, though, one thing I want to talk about is the Leclerc getting the radio message from the team to let signs by. Oh, and, he just and went- then he and then you could hear that he turned on his mic and then he turned it off. Like, oh, what did he want to say? He said, never mind. <laughs> yeah, it took him some time. But here's the thing is they told him they told to let him pass. But there's still a good gap between Leclerc and Sainz. Mm-hmm. So I think I don't know. I don't know if they wanted him to pass like right then and there. But they kind of gave the direction prematurely, I think. Absolutely. And then I think that there was another driver that was really close behind that could have taken advantage mm-hmm. of that switch. Absolutely. Two drivers. Absolutely. So I think that was poor timing. But Ferrari hasn't always been the best strategizing team. You remember all those memes from last year? It's like, you guys all got any more of them strategies? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't think that they, they make the best decisions strategy-wise. So it would make sense that they told them to switch there when they probably shouldn't have. And again, I think you're looking at a team that probably said you're both number one drivers and we're trying to win a championship. And yeah. At some point, someone's got to give up for, for the other and mm-hmm. they're not going to be OK with it. Well, it's like we talk about all the time, like there's not really any first driver or second driver, but the cars are clearly marked. So. Well, just so you can tell them apart. Right. Yeah, that's what they say. He's, I mean, Lewis Hamilton. You don't like that green tape on the top of the. I don't think Lewis Hamilton would ever have a car with green tape. He'd be like, "Take it off. It's got to go to somebody else." Probably same thing like Daniel Ricciardo and Lando Norris. <laughs> like Lando Norris is the more senior driver for McLaren, but they didn't switch the stickers. Yeah, it was a power move by Lando. So, that's also Ricciardo's got the no sticker, and Lando still got the sticker. Yeah. But the what sticker? The. The green sticker on the, the top. On the top, okay, yeah. yeah. So I was just saying that there's like no first or second driver. Yeah. But. It's got to be psychology on that because every time I see the cars, I automatically think that's the second driver. Mm-hmm. Right. Not the first driver. Mm-hmm. That's now, the how second did you hear driver. about that? Or did, how did you – because the reason we have that, that understanding is because you had mentioned it. We were in Mexico when they were going around and someone said, oh, that's so-and-so. And I was like, no, that's that's Valtteri because it's got the tape on the, on the green tape. And we were right. like – Okay. Oh my gosh, he's right. right. Yeah, and I I kind of noticed that through the races, Mm -hmm. and I and with that I didn't look at it. I just figured they have to tell the cars apart when you're doing broadcasting far away, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that tape is very visible. Oh, so I figured that's the easiest way to tell. It's like, Mm -hmm. oh, just look at the tape, and we know who it is. Yeah. But and I guess maybe I should need to look at why they have that. But I'm I just assumed that that's why they had it because driver one and two. Well, and I'm sure we're not the only three people in the world who think that. Yeah. Like I'm sure everybody is like, oh, that's the second driver. Right. Even though it's just to distinguish between the cars, but I'm like, right. So that's the second driver. Right. <laughs> because it's just easy enough every season to switch said sticker and put it on another car, so people don't think that. But they right. keep it on the same car of the same person for for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, question is, who's got the green tape on the Land Stroll in Vettel? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think Stroll does. I think Stroll has the green tape. The green tape? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I, you... James is going to look it I'm up. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Stroll, but I could be mistaken. Wouldn't be the first time I've been wrong. But if you ask anybody, I'm always right. I may always be right, but I am never wrong. Period. No. He's got the green on the top. Land Stroll does. Or the yellow. Or Yeah. So what does that mean? Number He's one, number two, driver. second driver. Both. <laughs> it's just it's just the other car. <laughs> but in my mind, that's the second driver. That is sense. What does that mean? That means that's the other car. <laughs> because technically, those were brand new cars this season. Anybody could have had the sticker. Yeah. And you, when you know, Vettel was sitting in the meeting like, if I have to drive the car with the sticker, I'm not driving. Like, I bet you they feel that way too. When Vettel and Leclerc were were driving, Leclerc had the green. Right. The minute. Carlos took over. Mm-hmm. Carlos had the green. Right. So I'm just saying, why right. take it off Leclerc if it's just to distinguish between the cars? Right. Because it's just the same car. Why even take it off? Mm-hmm. You know who I didn't mention as a favorite driver is because uh, I think that was one of the questions for a previous podcast. Sebastian Vettel is probably one of my favorite drivers. I know you just want to see him succeed. Yeah, he's such a real. He's a really nice guy. So he was doing an interview. They were taking that truck that takes them around the track. and They're doing the interviews Mm -hmm. and the fans can say hi. But it was at the U.S. Grand Prix where he was like, you know, please make it easier on the people who have to clean, you know, up after you. Please Mm -hmm. clean up yourself. Bring your trash. I don't know if that's just a PR thing, but after the race, you had a whole bunch of people in uh, the Austin Martin racing shirts. 
picking up trash after the well, race. Well, he goes around and picks yeah, up trash himself. Yeah, he picks himself. up trash after himself, too. So. Well, and he also got, like, fined for wearing those, like, One Love t-shirts, um, supporting the LGBTQ community. And I think that's really nice as well. And he was like, and I'd do it again, too. He's like, it's not about how much money I get fined. I'll keep doing it because it's something that I believe in. And I think he's being a good ambassador, and I think that that shows. It's one thing when you go on social media and post about it, but then you never, you, we never see you do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's one other thing when you write out with the public and actively being a good role model for everybody that's watching. Right. And I think leading by example is a good way to do things. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially because um, our government and communities don't do that. This podcast is brought to you by local government, <laughs> <laughs> local government. We're here to help. <laughs> we're from the government and we're here to help. Sir, the end of the world. No, but that is definitely the end of our podcast. Hey, yeah. I All right. like that segue. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us for our third F1 talk from Friends with Cars. We'll come back next week. <laughs> See you next later. week for, for Brazil. Oh, yeah. When we so, meet in Brazil. I will be less hungover next week. It is. We don't know that. You're right. We don't know that. <laughs> We're going to be at the beach, so. That's right. I should have this ready. November fourteenth. Yep. It's next week. We'll be home that Sunday, right? We'll we'll drive back on Sunday. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just have to watch it when we get back. So hopefully yep. everybody hangs on the edge of their seats for our next podcast. Don't even watch the race until our podcast our podcast is up. Period. You're welcome. All right. See you guys next time. See, See ya. ya.